In rural areas throughout the world, the story of agriculture always has the same beginning. It starts with a seed. The ending may be different. Different crops are grown. Some provide food for the farmer's family. Some are to sell in local markets. Some are to export. But at the beginning, it's always the story of farmers and their seeds. Over the millennia, farmers have taken seeds from the wild, adapted them to fit their needs, to fit their environments, and, of course, to provide them with food. Now, with the world's population expected to increase by 50% within the next 50 years, amidst the backdrop of changing climates and global conflicts, the pressure is on us to find ways to feed the population and to increase agricultural production without further depleting the Earth's natural resources. That is why plant breeders and scientists offer new seeds to the mix. They have the means to improve farmers' traditional crops, to increase yields, new varieties that represent progress. But in that march toward progress, the mix is changing. When farmers adopt improved varieties, they often abandon their traditional types, concentrating instead on one cash crop or higher yielding varieties. Each time a traditional variety is abandoned, it means a loss of options. Options for solving unexpected agricultural problems. In 1949, farmers in China grew 10,000 varieties of wheat. By the 1970s, they grew just 1,000. In the United States, in the 1800s, farmers grew 7,000 varieties of apples. By the end of the 1900s, all but 300 were extinct. Mexicans have lost 80% of their corn varieties. India, more than 90% of its rice. These are not isolated issues. Think of how often national agricultural economies are based on crops that are not indigenous. Wheat, a staple throughout the world, originated in the Middle East. The potatoes grown in China originated in South America. The soybeans grown in Brazil originated in China. Italy's tomato-based cuisine relies on tomatoes indigenous to the Americas. And this global interdependence does not stop here. With modern science, traditional crops can make contributions far beyond a local farmer's field. Now it is possible to share varieties and create new ones that provide natural resistance to disease or to pests or to climate extremes all around the world. For decades, farmers and research organizations have worked to conserve crop diversity by collecting, by cataloging and by storing plants of many varieties in gene banks to create a global savings account for feeding the populations of the future. In 1996, 150 nations committed to support the world's crop gene banks. New information compiled by the UN Food and Agricultural Organization clearly shows that a great percentage of these gene banks do not have the capacity to care for their seed collections over the long term. A report from the UK's Imperial College at Wye maintains that only by creating an endowment 
sufficient to support long-term conservation, can farmers and scientists be assured access to these valuable seed collections in the future. The Global Crop Diversity Trust represents a major step forward in protecting these precious collections so that the story of farmers and their seeds can continue to grow. Thank you.